there's going to be a lot of media, just a warning. <laughs> media. <laughs> this is California therapist Baba Wasimba, which is Swahili for the Lion King. He was the son of American missionary parents in Kenya, and at age 15, he started working at a lion sanctuary where, sadly, his parents were attacked and eaten by lions. And soon after, he moved to America and was troubled and was drawn to other troubled youth. And he felt a calling to help, but didn't know how. And during this time, he had a vision. And a powerful lion came to him and roared. And he realized that the way to heal was through the way of the lion. So he decided to form prides in an unusual form of therapy called lion therapy, where people get together and act like lions. Participants begin with guttural growls and gradually work up to a roar. And during sessions, participants can also eat meat and other food that's scattered on the ground with their mouths and hands. And this was in 1995, for self-help and all these therapy programs are becoming popular. And reporters love this and wanted to experience it too. So Baba Wasimba gets on Sky TV and London Tonight and Good Morning America and BBC Radio. And he's this international spectacle. He flies to Brazil and London to host his therapy sessions. And news reporters participate and love it. Baba Wasimba says, we give, to, we give people the courage to roar and the power to attack their pain. By roaring and eating meat together as a family group, we're able to tap into a primal, almost trance-like state. We must roar and heal the wounded animal within and become better human beings. And it was covered in the media. Uh, news publications loved writing about this. But this was 100% staged. Baba Wasimba is not a therapist. He's not even from California. That's not his name. And all the people participating in the sessions are actors, except for the journalists that came to cover it. <laughs> uh, this is not a regularly scheduled class. He has not been doing this for years. This was the work of Joey Skaggs, who's a serial media prankster. Um, this was Joey in 1992. He's getting ordained in San Bernardino as Father Joseph uh, to be a minister for a stunt where he puts a confessional booth on the back of a tricycle and calls it the Portifes. Uh, and uh, he says the church must take an aggressive stance and go where the sinners are. So where's a place with a lot of sinners? Uh, where's the hub of sinners? He, tra he takes the tricycle to the 1992 Democratic National Convention <laughs> in New York City, where people are rallying with pro-choice signs and their liberal ideologies, and people are going in the booth, and they're going in and out all day, and he tells journalists that 12 delegates went in the booth to confess their sins. And he also said that he peddled the tricycle from California to New York. And nobody questions this. Uh, he actually makes the, the front page of many publications. Uh, there are thousands of journalists around. He's in the San Francisco Chronicle and the Chicago Tribune and the Miami Herald and USA Today. But also, this was 100% staged. Uh, the people going in and out of the booth were actually his friends and co-conspirators that were pretending to just participate. Um, and a reporter finally catches him when uh, they realize he, they clarify with California whether or not he, he's legitimate and he's not actually part of the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> so um, this is, yeah, Joey continuously builds these imaginary worlds. Uh, this is him as another identity. He's computer scientist Dr. Joseph Benuso, and he's leading this team uh, called the Solomon Project, which built this artificial intelligent jury. Uh, this program would look at facts uh, and evidence and lie detection through voice analysis and use something called fuzzy logic to determine a definitive verdict. And this would eliminate the need for a human jury or judges who can be biased. And this was in 1995, and this was a really novel concept, and also timely, because this was right after the controversial O.J. Simpson trial, who O.J. Simpson has, <laughs> has been featured earlier. It's interesting. Um, uh, so yeah, this was covered by major news publications and journals, and uh, he told journalists that he's going to retry the O.J. Simpson trial and that they should come and watch the system work. 
Um, and so how did he do this? He, he needed a room of computers, so he found this CD-ROM company in Soho called the Voyager Company and replaced all their office signage and got 25 people to pretend to work there, and he actually got all these graphic artists to just create images <laughs> that are static on all the screens. <laughs> and, this, and this is an example of what it looks like. This was covered by ABC as a real program working, and there's, the graphics are so silly. Um, but it was a good story and believable uh, because it was a controversial topic. Um, and this was actually the fifth time, CNN covered it too, and this is the fifth time that Joey tricked CNN. And it was some, actually, sometimes the same reporters came to, came to video him and didn't realize it was the same guy because it was such a different context. Uh, he was eventually found out because he said he was affiliated with NYU Law, law School and uh, they, someone finally called NYU and asked and uh, he had, they denied having any association with the project. Um, and so many journalists continuously fell for Joey's pranks. Here's him as entomologist Joseph Greger. Uh, this is in 1981 and... Joseph Greger creates this breed of cockroaches, uh, super roaches, that are immune to toxins and radiation. So it would be this cure-all pill that fights everything from diseases to nuclear radiation. <laughs> and journalists write about this as though it's true. Uh, he actually stages this like whole outbreak of the roaches too, but that wasn't determined to be fake. And he ends up um, getting interviewed on NBC. His organization's name was also ca called Metamorphosis, and his name was uh, <laughs> Joseph Greger, like Greger Samsa, the, Ka the Kafka novel. Uh, and this reference was not recognized by journalists as a giveaway that this was all a joke. And during his interview, <laughs> he has this briefcase, and inside the briefcase, he brings roaches, and he shows the roaches to the news anchor during their interview and acts like this crazy entomologist. And then this, he escalates the prank that he actually has a cassette player that he pulls out of his briefcase towards the end of the interview. And he starts playing the folk song La Cucaracha, claiming <laughs> that uh, it's the organization's theme song. And, and NBC never retracted the story to be false. <laughs> But he wanted to draw attention to all the drug companies at the time that were taking advantage of sick people with these quick cure-alls. And this was the 80s where people believed everything they saw on TV and in the papers to be true. And Joey did this again and again. Um, in the 60s, he was a tour guide that took hippies on a bus tour of suburban Queens. He was also a psychic attorney, a fish condo real estate agent, a chef that used dogs as meat, a man who sailed from Hawaii to California, a leader of an organization called Walk Right that enforced sidewalk etiquette on the streets of New York, <laughs> and uh, the founder of this special diet plan, which is a group of security professionals that follow you around for $300 a day and tell you what to eat. <laughs> And actually, this man, this man in the sunglasses is the reason how I know about Joey. This is actually my neighbor when I lived in New York, and he was one of his co-conspirators from the 80s into the early 2000s, and I was really excited to learn about Joey because I am a prankster too. Um, and, but when I was learning about all of Joey's work, I was really conflicted because his work was so, was so impressive for like this time where people believed everything on TV to be true. And, um, and these stunts made me think of all the fake news I could spread too. But I feel like it's my responsibility to give journalists true stories uh, in the time I live in, and I really want the media to succeed. Media. <laughs> and it's interesting that the same tactics that Joey are using are to shine light on poor journalism are actually being used by media publications to manipulate people. Um, like, like the roaches could totally be a clickbaity thing you would, you would click on as an ad. Um, and tricking people is easy. Like I could trick people into thinking that this Romanesco cauliflower is the first 3D printed vegetable, uh, which I did. I, I walked around CES, uh, the Consumer Electronics Show, and people totally believed me. Uh, but, 
but, but then ultimately I decided to switch my story and I had a better reaction when I told people that this was just a regular vegetable grown in nature and that I needed to get it scanned. And it immediately became more interesting than the technology they were doing a demo of because people were stopped in their tracks and they were staring at a plant and they were appreciating this natural phenomenon because of the unusual context. And I'm thinking about the goals of a prank and I think the goal of a prank is to just draw attention to something in an unexpected context. You can trick people, sure, but the ultimate goal is to make people question the realities around them. Uh, oh, here's another prank where um, at the Oracle Software Conference last year, I sent in a team of people dressed as wizards to pretend they're at this alternate conference for oracles, uh, <laughs> as in <laughs> divinators and soothsayers, and they were walking around wearing capes and pretending to be fortune tellers, and we were doing tarot card readings on the conference attendees. And people were having these heartfelt and honest conversations with us in a context where they otherwise wouldn't. This guy was asking whether or not he should leave his job. And took our response, and we all gave him this great feedback. And this moment actually might have altered a, a decision for him. And if you can make someone stop mid-track or mid-routine and make that unsuspecting person without, without hurting them in any way, kind of confused about what's going on, followed by, oh, I get what you're doing, and then get them to think about things differently, their life and reality, then that's a good prank. And if you could do something like Joey, who got this news anchor, a very poised news anchor in the middle of her day at work to suddenly start roaring like a lion in front of millions of viewers. That's a great prank. Um, and so, so Joey Skaggs is this inspiration. He did a beautiful, beautiful job pointing out fake news, which was totally ahead of his time. And he seriously entertained people. And so uh, instead of a toast, I would actually like to try out Joey's lion therapy because I think it's actually a great idea that should exist. So let's all raise a glass and let's roar like a lion. <laughs> roar!